On this episode of the podcast, we catch up with Mike James from Australia. We talk about composition, editing, you name it. It was open season. All this and more. It's Monday, February 27th, and this is the iPhoneography Podcast. It's a uh, a joy to have with me tonight, uh, not only my good friend Dave Podner. Hello, Dave. Hey, Greg. Uh, we also have, from the other side of the planet, Mr. Mike James. Hello, Mike. How are you? Good day, guys. I'm very, very good. Good. Long time no talk. Yeah, it has been, hasn't it? Yeah. Um. Yeah, so we just thought we'd uh, bring Mike on tonight and just uh, talk about whatever comes to mind. You know, we don't have a, we didn't put an agenda together, and um, we're just going to shoot the breeze and, and see what we've been up to. So what about you, Mike? Uh, what, you've been out taking many pictures at all lately? or Because uh, um, you are getting into, you're approaching autumn over there, aren't you? We are, we are. So we're still we're still having some hot days over here. Um, today's going to be thirty four degrees Celsius. Not Ooh. sure that converts to Fahrenheit, but <laughs> but it's a, when you're standing here in the in the uh, garage slash studio, it gets a bit warm. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, oh, yeah. It's, it is changing. But uh, what what have I taken lately? Oh well, I to be honest, I don't take as many photos as as I'd like to because I find when I'm taking photos, it's for content that I'm creating. But that said, yesterday I uh, had to travel interstate, drive interstate. It was an eight-hour drive, and uh, and I stopped. I found this farmhouse on the side of the road. Actually, it was last week. A farmhouse on the side of the road, and I had to just stop and take photos. And even though I knew I still had another six hours to go, <laughs> I <laughs> jumped out with the with the with the iPhone and uh, and was looking for all these different compositions, cool, interesting compositions, and that sort of thing. And before I knew it, I'd wasted it a whole hour. Um, it's like, oh, wow. oh, crap, I've still got six hours of driving to go. <laughs> I'd be ready for a nap. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. So, yeah, I, yeah. so I, I, I don't take as many photos as, as I'd like to. It's just time. Um, but when you get an opportunity like that, it's like I just, just really enjoy it. It was just escapism and just a, a bit of me time. <laughs> yeah, really? yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you, you were saying uh, before we hit the record button here that you got uh, more weekends available now, so maybe that'll improve. You know, the 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 oh. uh, your creativity for your own you, purposes. You remember what it's like. <laughs> the weekends <laughs> is not my time. <laughs> that's that's when I become the the parent the parent Uber driver, the Puba driver. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> uh, ballet, ballet, swimming, tennis, uh, and then my daughter's now seventeen, so she's going to party. So it's drop offs, pickups. I, I I feel like I've got less time now. <laughs> oh wow! Down to work Monday to Friday. <laughs> so you, you're just gonna have to win a lottery and retire. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. What about you, Dave? You've been shooting anything? Like we're not going to do our recent photos in this episode, but um, just uh, any anything you've been shooting lately at all? Well, we did have the auto show last weekend. Oh yeah, and I before. see you got yeah. the. Uh, I saw you got the, the new Corvette E Ray. Well, no, believe it or not, I don't. That was not the E Ray. Oh, it wasn't. It okay. was just a yeah. No, that was just a, a, a exceptionally high end Corvette. Oh, okay. As um. As we me we went with a friend and me and Ruth went and um for especially the luxury cars um the guess was how much does it cost and does the car cost does the car cost more in our house yeah <laughs> and you'd be surprised how many cars that that Corvette the um the high high end one not just the high end one the one you could. There was two Corvettes there, one that you could get up to but not in. Mm -hmm. um, even if they had it unlocked, I don't think I could get in. You, oh, it looked yeah. like you have to be port that thing. And I remember they actually had barriers around it. You could not touch it. Um, wow. The high-end one was $171,000 US. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> ridiculous. And that there is... were a good amount of luxury cars um that were over a hundred thousand dollars and wow. it, it just yeah i i know that they say the average price of the car in the u.s is in the 
four, like $45,000. But that's so many SUVs and trucks. And, you know, the, the price of those are just so freaking expensive. Yeah. And it's so hard to find a car anymore. Mm. And just walking around, you know, you sit in a car like, oh, this is nice. Um, you know, to try and take pictures of the inside. And, and one, one thing that helps, um, the ultra wide lens, taking a picture ultra wide and 16 by nine. Yeah. You get that picture of the inside because so many of these insides of these cars, they're just a giant computer screen built across. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got a so picture of, a, the, of the Corvette inside, right? Um, not on the inside, no. Oh, okay. I, I got I got an outside picture from like a low angle. Um, let me actually go back here. The one, let me see what I have. I have actually have a few. We have I, there was a BMW from the inside, and you can see the the they actually had it. It was an electric one. It was lit up, and you maybe can see the computer uh, screen one. I, kind of going across. One. Yeah. Yeah, and there was like a Lexus that was very similar. And they were just like, like I said, just like a surround. It's, it's like you've seen some people who are creative people with like three computer monitors kind of bent around them. Yeah. That's what, that's what I felt like being in the car. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's crazy. Have you tried, David, have you tried um, doing a, with, a comparison with the ultra wide camera and using just the standard camera and doing a, a panoramic where you move the phone along across the interior to see what the different results? I, I didn't try it there, though. No. Yeah. I didn't try it there. That, I, I, and I, I, I give that a try just because you're so cramped in those cars. Yeah. And yeah. you're only. You know, arm's length away. I think the gotcha. Boeing would be a little bit. I, I tried that actually on an outside picture, where I don't feel like I don't think I posted it, but I try to see if they even. Yeah, it's it. a good. It's a good point. I did it on on our Dodge, and it worked really well. But yeah, Corvettes are, are quite compact, aren't they? <laughs> Can't yeah. imagine you probably. Yeah, you probably but a lot of these cars. Are, yeah, a lot of the cars, even the the luxury ones, you, you can. I mean, it's so easy to touch. So you're within. You're within kind of, you know, reaching distance. Gotcha. So even doing this, it may cause some issues. But like I said, I did one, and I'm trying to see if I saved it here. I did, yeah. And I did a, uh, you could act, there was actually a balcony where you can go out, get some fresh air. And I did do the panoramic outside. And it was almost like 180 degree panoramic. Oh, wow. Nice. Of the riverfront and the, it, it, and that actually turned out pretty good. I didn't do any editing, but uh, it turned out I don't not sixteen by nine, but a little um, not as tall. But that actually turned out pretty good. You can tell the stitching that went in on it. Also, it was kind of breezy that day and a little chilly. Um, one of our few chilly days. Um, <laughs> literally, we've had. I don't know, Greg, you're going to get slammed with the snow that they're calling. We're getting for. a little bit right now, actually. Okay. Because I know, like, Minnesota, upstate New York is getting, like, a foot, foot and a half of snow oh, I hope over a couple days. <laughs> uh, but we're missing it because we are going to be 70 degrees tomorrow. 70? Which, yeah. Wow. Which, which, like which for the middle of winter. Celsius. Yeah. In the middle of winter, that's we're not supposed to be that warm. We wow. really are not supposed to be that warm. <laughs> we're wow. supposed to be a barely above freezing at this time of year, and yeah. frozen and cold and have snow on the ground. Nothing, but yeah. So you know, I was able to try that panoramic, but um, yeah, I didn't think about it. Also, just honestly, I never even thought about trying to panoramic that close but i'll try i can actually try to my car downstairs yeah you have to you have to move way. the camera like if you just if you just pivot the the phone in the one location yeah. it'll have a you know, crazy distortion because that camera mm -hmm. lens right or subject to lens distortion yeah but on uh, have a look at my um youtube channel i've got a, a video there on 40 tips on vehicle photography so there might oh, be okay. one in there that you haven't thought of before cool. yeah. Oh, yeah cool and on the website to blog as well do you have uh, big auto shows over there? 
in Australia. Yeah. yeah. Like um, where they show yeah, the new do. cars we, and prototypes and stuff. No, not not new ones. We have a lot of um uh club like uh, car clubs we, and they have yeah. the permit uh license and they all get together, they have gatherings, you see them um quite a lot. And a good friend of mine has got a um a Volkswagen, a Herbie car, one of those. Oh yeah. Those oh, ones. Bug. <laughs> and it's done up. It, it, it is immaculate. It is Herbie. And mm. uh, and he travels all over the um all over the country with that thing on a, oh, on nice. a you know the back of a truck and <laughs> yeah and uh, unlike unlike your experience he doesn't have the little ropes up and all that sort of thing he has all the kids and all the adults in there um, having a great experience so yeah oh so, yeah yeah we we have we have clubs that go around we don't really have because um, we don't really we, we used to have a lot of car manufacturing here in Australia but they're all they're all gone now so we don't have those big shows yeah, oh yeah shows are more for um caravan shows boating shows but not not vehicle ones anymore yeah oh, yeah. yeah that's interesting mm. um yeah we have uh the, the toronto auto show and it's um if it hasn't happened already it's got to be coming up soon it's usually around this time of year and uh i haven't been to one in a few years but uh but the last one i was at there was um there was a, a bugatti veyron oh. made out of lego what <laughs> made out of Lego, <laughs> and it actually was drivable. It had it had an electric motor in it, and and wow. it went like it went about twenty five miles an hour. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool, and it was really well done. Like it was life size. It was right to scale, and wow. uh, it had actual tires on it and everything. So yeah, it was pretty neat. And uh, but yeah, there's there's you know there was all kinds of new stuff there, and and I was telling Dave this. Um, on on our last podcast that when the um uh when the auto show is on there's two guys that i know from work they go down they go down to this thing but they don't go together they go at separate times and whoever goes first will leave a our our dollar we used to have a dollar bill now it's called a, the loony it's a coin a dollar coin with a loon on it so we call it the loony and <laughs> whoever went first would leave a loony under the floor mat of one of the cars and it's up to the next guy. When he goes, he's got to find it. <laughs> oh, right. okay. So I thought that was it's not awkward funny. at all. Hey, what, are you hoping to find a key under there? <laughs> <laughs> but could you imagine you have to sit in every car? <laughs> you know, looking for this loony. If you're the first guy, you could just go sit in one car, put it there, and leave if you want. But the second guy, That's oh no, he's got to go and spend the whole day. <laughs> go going from car to car, check it under the floor mats. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Love traditions like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah. but no, I I uh I enjoy doing uh you know shooting doing like car photography and that. It's uh it's a lot of fun and interesting angles and you know, you get the details and things like that. So yeah, um, yeah. No, one thing that I, was kind of neat. Was it was that day? Was a one thing that was kind of neat was where they have the uh, a couple of the ultra luxury cars. Um, they weren't in the main area uh, where the rest of the cars are there. They were out like on a concourse type setup where there were giant windows. So I was able to get, uh, there's an uh, still active railroad, but it's old. It, it, look, it looks rusted. Um, railroad um, bridge in the background shot of these ultra modern cars. Oh, yeah. So That's it neat. was just a nice contrast between the two. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, in the main hall, the main our main hall, they when they made our convention center, they made it where it's a lot of natural light. So there's not like a lot, but it, and there. Oh, I think we just lost him. Uh oh, we just Mike. lost Mike. Hopefully he'll be back in a sec. But um, well, anyway, you carry on with your point, and yeah. and when okay, he comes back, okay, yeah. We'll... So it, it it was it's it's still nice because it is a very these are very high ceilings so they're designed they're they're not just your ten foot twenty foot these are very very high ceilings that let, let in natural light natural heat cooling with the ventilation so your shots are actually pretty good of mm -hmm. anything in there because you don't have to deal with fluorescence or other artificial lights a lot it's like it's nice diffuse natural light which is like as we know, the best light for taking a lot of your photos. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Mike's back. 
<laughs> yeah, I, sorry, I had I had another Zoom call going at the same time, and it, it timed out and dropped oh. took me out of both of them. Oh, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> well, that's okay. Um, so uh, let's see, what else can we talk about here? Um, so I know none of us are Android guys, but the S twenty three Ultra just came out, and our good pal Shane Mostyn did a video showing an astro shot of it did did you did you guys see that mm, i saw the thumbnail i saw the the end product that looks am- amazing something that you wouldn't expect an android to take in one one photo yeah um he did say in the video it took four minutes or something like that to shoot it which is similar to the the pixel <clears throat> and uh and i thought that was interesting and um he's using the expert raw uh, app, I guess, that you have to get for it to do, mm-hmm. you know, that type of raw thing. And, um, uh, you know, pretty much his, his usual workflow, editing in Lightroom and whatnot. But, um, but yeah, it, it turned out pretty good. Um, uh, I watched a bit of the, um, uh, event or announcement or whatever that Samsung did for that phone. And when I was watching it, it's whoever did their um their color grading i guess on their video because they said all the video and, and and whatnot in this event or in this um announcement was all filmed on the s23 ultra and mm-hmm. it all looks so dark yeah but right. now that i'm seeing pictures from people who have them you know the, the pictures aren't that dark at all they're they're, they're actually not bad um and and well let's see have i seen any video i've seen a little bit of video in some comparison videos where they compared either to the iphone 14 pro or the um even the s22 ultra to see what the difference is and the video doesn't look that bad like it doesn't look that dark so right. i mean so my when you say it looked dark was it was it the general whole production of the event or just the photos in the in the in the event well it was it more looked- more of just the video coverage uh, well, yeah. the, the video, the the photos looked a little heavier on the blacks too, but the the video stuff, it it just looked like they, you know, really amped up the blacks or the contrast, yeah, and it was right. it was really dark looking, in my opinion. I, I find when I produce um, YouTube videos, <laughs> not not comparing myself to their production team by any stretch, <laughs> <laughs> but I I found that I have to if I if I edit a video and and then. Um, go and add some color grading it affects the still images that i have in the video and then i have Uh, to go back and actually place my photos back on top of the video again because that's not how i I intended my photos to turn out Um, right surely they did they didn't do that (laughs) Uh, i I would hope not i would yeah Uh, yeah what what do you do your video editing in uh i use one called uh filmora uh wondershare filmora um, oh yeah it's it's one i bought several years ago it was a lifetime license and they've been fantastic i think this is the last one because the they've developed the software so much that they've gone you know what you have lifetime access but this is a totally different product to what you bought this many oh, years really? ago so this is the last last free update i think um but oh, no yeah. i find it really intuitive for my workflow it just it just works yeah oh, yeah yep well, i've been mm. using davinci resolve and and i mean it's free and it's like a pretty powerful pro- program for being free. And um, it, uh, well, I've been watching some videos on it to learn a few things. And they're, they're saying that about 95% of what's available in that program is the free stuff. Yeah, so I thought that was pretty impressive. Um, but, uh, you know, with with it, of course, you can have, uh, you know, different layers, obviously, right? And so one layer could be all your video stuff and then, another layer could be your photos so you can just do the color grading on the videos side of it and not even touch the photos and that type of thing uh, so nice. I just wondered if your program had that had that option but it probably does uh but i find that I, pro- I probably need to do the grading early on in the workflow because i find that by the time i get to the end of it i've chopped and added and taken out so much i've just it just looks ridiculous all these little tiny bits of video and then um yeah, I, I probably need to look at my workflow. Probably do a bit better. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 
But that DaVinci, well, uh, that, um, that, that natively uh, works with uh, Stream Deck and, and those sort of things where it records the video locally and then you can actually import it straight into because into DaVinci. Yeah. And it's one that it's like, oh, I, I, but is there a steep learning curve? Is it very similar to other editing apps? Um, the only thing I can compare it to is iMovie. And okay. it's, it's kind of similar, but there's, you know, there's different ways of doing things. Um, I don't know how it compares to Final Cut Pro, which is Apple's professional uh, version of video editor. But, um, yeah, uh, no, you know, yeah, I would say there's a bit of a learning curve to it. Uh, how steep it is, I don't know. But um, there's a couple of channels on YouTube that they do all kinds of stuff showing how yeah, to do right. things. So Great. it's, it's oh, pretty that's good. The fun bit, isn't it? Learning. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Speaking of learning. How's the book been going? The book's uh, been going well. Been going stronger well. photo composition, four-step system, over 100 techniques and tools. Um, folks, if you don't have this book, you should get it. it it's just loaded with stuff, which is um, like, wow. Like, uh, I, Okay, I just flipped it open to page I don't know what. <laughs> if you know what I mean, Mike. <laughs> um <laughs> You, you know, know and, <laughs> yeah. So here's one that says visual anchor where the eye lands. And then it talks about, you know, or do you talk about, um, you know, not every photo needs to have an anchor, but it certainly helps. My lighting's terrible in here. It helps to create uh, a captivating photo. And then, and then you talk about, you know, different things about that, like, you know, positioning the subject in the frame and uh, you yeah. know, th there's, there's tons of stuff in here to learn from um like good that, gosh that was an interesting one that that visual anchor that's a really interesting one because uh for so long i as you know i've been working in photography for over 25 years but i've only really been someone who's interested in photography <laughs> for the last six or seven years and and i and i'm an amateur photographer like uh the thing that i struggled with the most was the composition storytelling and I would go out with a friend of mine who's a professional landscape photographer, and we'd be down there at um, down at Ocean Grove, down the Great Ocean Road, and um, and we'd be taking these photos like we're just taking photos of water. What's there's no story. <laughs> like everyone yeah, talks about yeah. story. What's the story here? And that yeah. visual anchor is one that um, it took me a long time to grasp that not every photo has to have a subject. It doesn't have to have a person in it. It doesn't have to have a flower yeah. or something there. Um, it, so a visual anchor is basically where does your eye go to first in the photo? So it could just be uh, um, some bokeh in the background, uh, the light coming through the trees. It could be mm -hmm, yeah. it could be anything, something that's bright, something that's vivid, sharp, something in there where you – and this is a great exercise. You look away from the photo, close your eyes, it kind of resets your mind, and then turn around and look at the photo. And where does your eye go first? Oh, that is the visual okay. anchor. That's where that's that's where your eye settles. That's what anchors you and attracts your attention first. It doesn't necessarily have to be the subject. Yeah, uh, a, a that's great a really way would be to have. Thought. Yeah, yeah. I, I find that that process, especially when you've been editing the same photo for a while. <laughs> I mean, even yeah. five minutes. You edit a photo for five minutes. You kind of get desensitized to what you, what you're doing, and everything becomes normal. And you can yes, you can go back and go uh, before and after that sort of thing. But um, but yeah, I think that that exercise uh, helps you kind of go. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I've well and truly overdone this. It's overcooked. <laughs> yeah. Well, see now. Visual... Okay. So, uh, this is what I love about the segment that Dave and I do called Our Recent Photos, and um, I've I've always struggled with storytelling in photos. I don't know about you, Dave, but I've always struggled with storytelling in my pictures, and I've I've wa always wanted to improve that. And that segment of the podcast really helps that because Dave will send me three pictures and I'll send him three pictures so that we each have them and we could look at them. And then we, we talk about them. Right. And we tell the story of the, of the photo and, you know, like Dave, he'll send me pictures of um even, even if it's out on a run, he'll stop and he'll take a picture of something. And I mean, there was one that he sent recently of a, of, remember that street, Dave, and it kind of mm -hmm. it went uphill. I wouldn't yeah. have had and you had a bandana that it, it went was up kind here. of black and white. Yeah. 
I wouldn't have had I wouldn't have had any clue that it was that it was going uphill, and you know, and and the rest of the the stuff about the picture, um, unless he told me the story about it, and you know, it, it it's kind of helping me think about, um, being able to 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 have the image tell a story when I mm. take it. Um, and, and I've always struggled with that, but doing that segment has, has helped me, um, you know, figure that out a little bit, I think. Yeah. And, think and that visual anchor to... thing, that's going to help too, I think. Yeah. I think something that will, will help, um, as well is, is when you take the photo and if you, in that scenario, you're taking a photo and you can, and you're trying to communicate that it's uphill, that's the photographic intention. When when you know what the photographic intention is, like what motivated me to take the phone out and take this photo? Why am I doing this? Who is it for? What's the output? Who's who's going to be the? Um, is this just something that I'm going to look back in in a couple of years time and go, wow, I I did that. Uh, so it's, it's for you, or are you going to share it on online? Um, mm-hmm. What is the in- intention? And then when you when you know what that intention is, you go, okay, somehow I need to communicate the gradient of this hill. So. Then you start looking at the composition. You go, okay, so the intention is that. So the first step of my four-step system is where do you position yourself and the camera? So if you position yourself at the bottom of the hill and you look up, it's a two-dimensional photo. So it's really hard to yeah. communicate. That. But if you move off to the side where you can actually see the gradient and some sort of reference point, like there might be a tree that's vertical or something that gives you some sort of um relevance and context that you can see what that gradient is then once you've positioned yourself uh, you can easily or better communicate that uh, that mm-hmm. incline and then and then yeah. the next step of the system the four step system is where do you position the main visual anchor or the main subject um and then after that where do you position the contextual elements the background elements and then the fourth step of the system which I kind of debated for a while whether to include this in a composition book but it is just as relevant and appropriate to the other steps is the editing side of it. Yeah. So when you yeah. go to edit, and that's why I've, I've got over a hundred techniques and tools because there's some editing tools that help the composition, like cropping, <laughs> the most obvious yeah. one. You can recrop yeah. and recompose the photo. You can rotate the photo. So you've got creative license with that with that photo, David. You could you could actually, if it haven't quite communicated that gradient, you well, you can rotate the photo a little bit and introduce a bit of tilt to kind of emphasize it and, and make it look a bit more um, extreme yeah. and, and tell and, that story. And Dave, you do that sometimes when you shoot because you make a, a, a conscious choice to shoot in 16 by 9 at times, right? Right, right. Or trying to, you know, uh, uh, let's say not taking a shot from the bottom of the hill. Like Mike said, th- there was a couple of shots that I tried to get to really show, hey, this is a steep hill. This is something unique. And it, like I said, two dimension, it still wasn't. It's it, it just, but maybe taking a shot halfway up, you know? Yeah. Um, and this was, this was years ago. Um, it was, uh, okay. It was, a, it was another run picture. And I tried to, it started on a very steep hill on a city street and just trying to get that to show how steep it is. It it just didn't get the feel for it. Mm -hmm. Um, Looking back, what I should have done, and it was this very short hill, like, you know, top to bottom wasn't that far, Um, maybe halfway up stop because i wasn't running for speed i wasn't trying to win a race it was just go out enjoy the run yeah take the phone out and take a picture of everyone going up the hill sideways oh nice. yeah yeah nice yeah to yeah, really that, show that, it that yeah. really touches on just what you were talking about mike you know mm, yeah. yep yeah, yeah having that so, visual reference uh-huh. of the other joggers you know yeah mid mm-hmm. ride um, and yeah. the, and the, the the orientation of their torso get, tells you how steep it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and and you know, I'll say this in in Dave's defense of how he um, took that photo that I was talking about about looking uphill. After we started talking about it, and he said that it was on a hill. If you look at the top of the frame, you can see buildings up over 
over the top of the hill. Right. Oh, nice. And and I just didn't see that at the beginning. Now, had I spent a, a little more time, you know, pr- browsing around in the frame within the frame, I would have realized, okay, wait a minute, that's over a hill. And I would have realized yeah. that, yes, that is definitely on a hill. Well, that's, um, that's, and that, that leads to that <laughs> step number four, the editing, because the editing, you can, you can do those local edits and you can change the visual hierarchy of elements in your, in your photo. So mm-hmm. you've got your visual anchor where your eye goes to first and then where your eye travels and we can we can totally manipulate and change that visual flow where it goes mm-hmm. based on where you put dark areas, light areas, vivid, sharp, uh, contrast, shape, um, form, the whole lot. You can change where the eye and everyone's different and not everybody's going to follow the same visual uh, flow that you intend yeah. Um, but you can actually just somehow try and make those buildings just over the edge stand out, so that becomes like the the second mm-hmm. or third thing that you noticed, and provide that 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 narrative. Yeah. Yeah. Now, break real quick. Uh, do you have share screen on by chance on the Zoom? Oh, I know this. This won't necessarily help for the um, podcast listeners, but just to show Mike the photo. Now, this is heavily edited because yeah. it was. It was overcast day, and I decided to take a picture to make it almost a, a little old tiny black and white. Um, and oh yeah, yeah, yep. Wow, love it. So yeah, yeah this in, was including this was uh, adding from a couple of episodes ago. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, go ahead, Greg. Yeah, we we uh, we looked at this in our recent photos. I think it was maybe two yeah. episodes ago. I think, and uh, um, I think I called it um, Dave's potential mystery book cover or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's so, right. I love the uh, I love the texture overlay. Yeah, like the the monotone. Mm-hmm. So you've taken out all the distractions from because I can see there. Looking in deep, I can see there's a stop sign. So that stop sign, if that was <laughs> in color, that'd be nice and red. I assume they're red over there as well. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yes, and they your are. Eye, yes. Your eye would go straight to that. <laughs> um, right. But by changing it to to one color, um, and then just concentrating on the shapes, the lines, textures, and um, then the, the large areas like the driveway, or the road there, uh, taking up the bottom third, majority of that bottom third, you kind of go straight to that first. And that leads you to that to that homestead. And there's 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 and, and I, I love the mystery of this photo where you've got uh, details that you get rewarded when you look further in. Like you, you you can see, yes, there's a homestead there, but when you look further in, you go, oh, there's some smoke coming out of the chimney. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so that gets your imagination going and gets you engaged in the photo. You think, okay, so this is painting a bit of a story. Oh, there's a car there, so they need to travel here by car. And you start to paint that picture in your own mind using your own experiences, your own perceptions, um, culture, biases that you, as a photographer, you have your own intention, but you can only provide these visual clues or cues, I should say, for the viewer to then go on and apply their own interpretation to it. And that's why that's what I love about photography. There is no right and wrong. <laughs> okay. There's, yeah. there's just different ways of doing it. And it's, and, and your viewer, different viewers will interpret it differently and they'll both get different things out of it but i i love the i love the the mystery of this that um texture overlay over the top with that to try and describe it for the podcast is just random well, actually, scratches and squiggles the kind of it, just it, have it, a low it, if if people look at their screen it'll be on their screen um because oh, it, it'll yeah. it'll be uh, uh in the enhanced podcast it'll be on available on the screen perfect perfect yeah, it's great. I love it. Very interesting yeah, photo. I've, I've always liked that image, Dave. Um, and that was kind of the vibe that you were trying to portray, is it not? Like a mysterious, right. um, you know, uh, almost like a Stephen King type of thing. Is that is that kind mm-hmm. of the, the vibe you wanted when yeah. you did that edit? Yeah, because as I was walking, as I was going up the road, the first thing I noticed was the smoke coming out of the house. Because it was just a cold. I'm so glad I said on the right thing. David. Had no, 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 no. Honestly, yeah. So it's like uh, I'm running up the I'm running up the road, and the houses are kind of on an outside bend, and it's more of an industrial area with just two houses there. 
And just the way that, you know, it, it, you only see really the two houses with, you know, a bunch of shrubbery and everything else around it. Just that little bit of smoke coming up to give it a little oh, bit of uh, texture there. So yeah, that's yeah, that's why I went into um, yeah, that's why I went in and then went into um, Snapseed to do the edits with the overlays and the border and everything else. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, speaking of Snapseed, um, there's been some issues with uh, uh, people trying to open raw files in Snapseed and it's not working. It's freezing up. Oh, right. Yeah, I, I've noticed. I noticed this on. Um, Somebody posted it. I think it was on the Explorers of Life uh, Facebook group that Rick Salmon has going. And um, I think that's where it was. Uh, I Don't even quote me on that because I don't know. I, I mean, so many groups on Facebook, it's crazy. But, um, but yeah, they tried to open a raw file on Snapseed from their iPhone and it froze up. Now, I tried it and uh, I believe the first one I tried was a pro raw file and it was okay. So I shot mm -hmm. an image with reflex and it was just a straight raw and it froze up. But but it's kind of been a hit and miss thing too, I'm hearing from people. Um, it doesn't happen all the time. Right. So then, of course, you go on to the App Store and you see that Snapseed hasn't been updated in over a year. Which I find is to be very interesting because uh, with iOS changing, you know, it constantly evolves not just every year but with every major release with every dot release that they bring out there's bound to be something in, in there that changes and i mean i wouldn't be surprised if there's something to do with the ios part of it not necessarily snapseed um well let's just say the ios part has been changing and snapseed maybe debt hasn't been keeping up because mm -hmm. um uh i mean halide Halide and Reflex, I think, are two apps that I know of that have had issues where images are not saving properly, and it's because of a bug in iOS, not necessarily the the photo apps or the camera apps. Um, so, if if you're using Snapseed, folks, and you want to do a raw file in it, all I can say right now is it could be hit and miss whether it works. <clears throat> yeah, that's um, interesting. Yeah, and because you you were a heavy Snapseed user, were you not at one time? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I still have the course there on Snapseed. Um, and you're right, it, it, iOS 15 I think was their last uh, major update. I'm sure I'm not sure if they've done bug fixes since then, but uh, but there's some apps out there that's now uh, integrate directly with Darkroom. And and then yeah, they have yeah. their own cloud storage. And I, and I wonder if that's to just circumnavigate some of those issues with iOS with their API and trying to avoid people potentially losing important photos. Yeah, yeah. that could be. I, I mean, I'm really loving Darkroom. Um it's my go to editor now. And uh yeah. um I haven't had like any Lightroom. issues with it. Gotta get you on board with Lightroom. Ah <laughs> uh, it's fantastic. Okay, so I know this the subscription for Darkroom is like $24 or $25 a year for me. Whereas if yep. I try to do that with Lightroom, it's probably going to be more like about $10, $12 a month. Yeah. So I think, mine, I think from I mine them out. $7 a month. Yeah. 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 Um, yep. I mean, Lightroom is good, but I just can't justify paying that much for it when, when Darkroom yeah. is, you know, it, it I, seems I, to do I, everything. I you couldn't. Need. Until they introduced the masking, that masking, and I know Lightroom, uh, sorry, Darkroom and uh, Polar, um, they both have similar where you've got your your sky mask and your subject mask. Like a lot of them are getting on board now, being able to do it. But but there's that side of it. What I, what I love about Lightroom is that you can do a um, a gradient mask, and then you can subtra subtract mm. the subject from it. So you can go in and edit mm. the sky. So you can do a sky select. And then you'll you'll select the whole sky. It does an amazing job and and prioritizes from the top edge downwards. So it does a it does a very good job. But then if you've got if you've got a tree line, you can then remove or or take subtract from that mask. You can subtract a luminance mask. So you can go in there and you can tap on the trees that have got a silhouette, and knowing that 
the trees are darker than the than the light sky and it'll go and do a really accurate um uh, mask of just the sky without the without the trees and then you can go in and you can apply so many i think the only thing i've noticed that's missing is you can't do a color gradient uh, sorry you can do a color gradient but not color channels you can't do color channels in a mask which i hope they change that <laughs> but i love the yeah. fact that you can add to a mask subtract to a mask using other masks and then um yeah, and that's that's one thing. I know others are catching up and they're doing really well. But another thing that I love about Lightroom is when you have a, a subscription, is that you have recommended filters. So they're like machine learning AI filters, and it's changing the way I process my photos now. I'll actually go in there first, and and especially when you're trying to find your own style or you have your your intention is. Uh, like that photo of yours, David, where you're trying to create that mood in the photo. You can go in there and it'll actually mm-hmm. analyze your photo, it'll analyze all the tones, colors, content in the frame, more machine learning than AI learning. And and then it will actually come up with some recommendations. And you can go in there and you can you can accept that. And what I love about Snapseed is that, uh, sorry, uh, Lightroom, is that it applies all those adjustments and then you can go into the adjustments, the editors, and you can actually see exactly what it's done and you can go, you know what, I love the look, but it has a magenta colour cast to it that I don't like and you can just adjust that. You can adjust anything that's that's in there. So, yeah, Mm -hmm. Lightroom is just one of those things that it's just changing the way I edit my photos. I'm editing a lot lot quicker and and I'm, I'm finding I'm discovering a bit more creativity in my edits. Yeah. yeah. Well, Lightroom, I would say it is leaps and bounds better at masking, um, especially at making a mask, uh, like a selective, selective mask, like say the sky. Um, and, and then it picks out the parts in amongst the trees and things like that. It does that very, very well. Um, Darkroom does a pretty good job of it. Mm. But mind you, you've got how many people at Lightroom or at Adobe working on this thing, whereas <laughs> with Darkroom, you've got a small team of maybe, I think it's like eight people that work on that in the, on that app. Um, and I don't know how many are actually writing code for it. But, um, you know, I, I just Im- I, I edited an image today that I took out of my archives. I, t- I shot it with my 10s Max, and it was a picture of a woman singing on the street in Toronto. And... I wanted to just lighten her up a little bit, but not the whole scene, the whole street scene, right? Yep. So in Darkroom, I went to the masking and I hit subject. And wow, did it ever do a good job at just picking her out of the frame. And then yep. I was able to just bring the brightness up a bit. Bob's your uncle, it was all done. Um, so it, it does a good job at masking. And I, I've used ma- the masking feature a fair bit in it. Um, so mm-hmm. that that's why I pay for the the annual subscription. It's like I say, it's only like twenty five dollars or whatever Canadian. Yeah. Um, but it's just a lot cheaper than, or not cheaper. Well, it's cheaper, but I mean, I'll, it's a lot less expensive, let's say, than than the Adobe. Yeah. Um, for sure. Now, now I don't know how much it is in for in the Canadian store, but I just checked Lightroom Mobile. Now we're not talking. Mm-hmm. I, I the desktop may be a different for different cause. But for Lightroom Mobile, it's four ninety nine a month, or you can buy a year's worth for fifty dollars. Well, that's not Excellent. bad. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, Excuse me. For that, me, yeah, I, not... I, I I justify it that um, I get so much more enjoyment out of the editing process than the actual capture, because, like we were saying before, on, on weekends now I'm I'm driving everyone everywhere i'm sitting in the car waiting for them to come out right. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah i have a lot of that's where i have my my me time and that me time i feel going in going into the archives like you suggested going back into old photos and just editing and playing around with them and that's that for me that's that's it that's what i enjoy so that 50 dollars, or i think it's seven dollars a month for us i think I'm, i'll have to have a look see whether we have an annual option because i'll definitely take that um yeah yeah that's 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 going out for a dinner once you know it's, it's um i can just you know you look at it that way yeah that is so true <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> that's 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 less than a takeaway dinner for the family one night <laughs> yeah it um, is it yeah. it is and you know that that's something that, that me as well as, as as just about anybody should should kind of look at too is uh 
um, you know, the cost of the stuff isn't as much as I think. But yeah. I didn't realize that there was a mobile only option. I thought it was, you know, you have to buy the, uh, you know, the, the creative. Well, that I don't know. For... I, I, yeah. Yeah. I just looked in because I do use Lightroom Mobile, but I used a free version. And yeah, I do too. when I looked in it, yeah, when I looked in it, it basically said, you know, um, it, it said, well, if you want to upgrade, here's how much it costs through the app store. And if you do the, yearly option you get a seven day free trial which i know you can only use once per se but you know mm -hmm. again another option fantastic and and, and 90 percent of not probably 95 percent of the tools that are in there even the color mix and color grading like really advanced stuff it's included in the free it's only for the subscription like i mentioned like i mentioned you get the masking you get the recommended filters uh, I think getting access to the community, the discovery, where you can actually just go and look at other people's photos that they've submitted and, and actually mm -hmm. some of them allow you yeah. to save their filters so you can mm -hmm. add that to your filter library. I think they're the, they're the differences for that. But if, you, if you're new to Lightroom uh, and you're a little bit overwhelmed by all the tools, there's a lot there that you can play around with. And for, for a lot of people, it is by far enough just using those free tools. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and you the mentioned only that one there about selecting the subject and brightening the subject. That sometimes when we do that, it, it can start to look a little bit fake when you brighten the whole subject. And that's what I yes. love about Lightroom asking is you can go, you know what, I just want it. I just want to brighten up the face. I just want to brighten up that area with it. Mm -hmm. I want that visual anchor. I don't necessarily want to um, bring people's attention to what pants they're wearing. Okay. Um, yeah. So what yeah. you can do is you can you can select the subject and then you can subtract a linear uh, mask and you can swipe from the bottom upwards and then you can have a gradual um, um, transition from light to dark. So it just gives you a, a bit more control to create those more natural looking photos. Yeah, I'll um, I'll see if I could find that image. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a few years ago now, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm well, kind of excited about talking about Lightroom because for so long I was in the exact same um, position as you. <laughs> for yeah. so long, it's like, no, nah, I, I can do so much with Snapseed. I sold courses on Snapseed. I just strong advocate for Snapseed, but uh, but that was the turning point was the the masks and being able to do that. It's like, oh my gosh, nothing else out there does this, and this is something that I love in my photo editing is the local adjustments, being able to change that visual flow so that's why i'm probably coming across a bit. well well i used to use polar a lot and that had an ability also but then they switched yeah. from a one-time purchase to a subscription model and i was happy using you know i was like oh i'm willing to pay you one time but i did never got around to it but then it said it's like five ten dollars it's it's something like it's like that's a little bit more than i'm willing to pay for what i'm giving up yeah <laughs> i was in the same boat so yeah we had the warning didn't we that it was gonna like and, and i did the uh -huh. same thing i just didn't didn't jump on it it's like oh i wish i had yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I bought the uh you know the whole polar <laughs> suite like i bought right into it and um uh, -huh. uh but you know what? I just don't use it that much. Um, and I mean, obviously, I wouldn't subscribe to it now um, if I mm -hmm. hadn't already paid for everything. But I think when I go into that app now, I'm pretty sure there's things that, uh, um, you know, it'll say uh, you need a subscription to take this any further type of thing. Uh, like, right. But again, I haven't used it hardly at all, really. Um, I used to so use I can't really verify quite a lot that when but... I was when I was using lens attachments on the on the phone, uh, especially the the zoom lens attachments. Your your um, twelve mm. and twenty one times attachments on there. You would have those chromatic aberrations that that fringing, that color distortion around contrasting edges. Mm. And Polar um, has a fantastic tool there to um, minimize that. It doesn't get rid of it, but it minimizes it. Lightroom has one as well um, in their, um, 
I can't remember what it's called, but they they have one a tool in there as well. It doesn't work anywhere near as well mm. as as Polar. So yeah, that that'd be one thing that I'd still definitely go into Polar and use. But I don't use yeah. lens attachments anymore. I don't get macros. Yeah. Uh, so folks, what look at your phone? You'll see this image I was talking about with this singer on the street in Toronto. Um, this. You, what you're going to see on your devices for the listeners is the edited version. But for us guys, this is this is the unedited version, but there's not a lot of difference okay. between the two. Um, so this is how it was shot. This is completely as is. And then this is the edited version. And so I did brighten up the background a bit. But, but I also used the subject mask to select the singer. And I just brought the brightness up just a little bit more on her so you could see her her facial features better and uh you know just a little more detail in in her you know as the subject of the photo um again so there's the before and there's the after and i think that mask just did such a good job of isolating just her you know her her flesh tones and her, her dress and things like that and just making her look that much uh, you know more interesting in the frame Mm, fantastic i love the the gesture there as well yeah yeah um so the no okay yeah there's a story behind this one <laughs> uh, i was um uh i took my brother down to a hospital down there um he had a knee transplant and he was going down for a checkup or whatever so uh while he was at his appointment i walked around and i mean this is right downtown toronto and i don't get a chance to get down there very often so I wanted to go to um, there's a there's a mall there called the Eaton's Center, um, you know, great big place, got a real nice big Apple store in it. So why not go check it out? And uh, just as I was walking along, she was just setting up, you know, put her put her stuff out, put her her amplifier on, and um, started singing a song. You know, but the music was playing, and uh, you know, there's a few people standing around watching her and whatnot, and listening and. And so I thought, well, I'll, I'll get a picture. And I got a video of her too somewhere. Um, but uh, uh, but that's basically the story behind this. And, you know, her name is Denver Haley. And there's a sign at the front that says she's available on uh, Apple Music or Spotify. But she's only got one song. Oh. <laughs> I looked it up and there's only one song on there. But but anyway, um, no, but it was just, just a, a, a nice... Um, thing to see because you don't see that kind of thing where i live you know once maybe once a year they have um buskers downtown putting on little performances and stuff like that but um but just and, and there's the odd person who's out in the street playing the guitar and whatnot but to have someone who's a really nice singer like this lady was it's it was a refreshing change yeah and uh so that's why i, I figured i better capture a few shots of her mm -hmm. before i went into the store so um but yeah, so that's uh, uh, an example of using that masking feature on mm. on darkroom. I mean, I mean, it it as soon as I hit it, bang! It just picked her out without batting an eye. Yeah. It, it it was so fast and responsive. That, that's fantastic because there's there's uh, around the front of her face and neck there. There's um, um, there's a little bit of separation, but you could see there where the software could get get tricked. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's really good. Yeah, and, and I know what you, you mean. Can you, in, can you invert that selection so you select the subject and then invert it so that it actually selects the whole background instead of them? Yep. Excellent. Because I find sometimes, uh, I can't remember which app I was using that has similar tools, you can't do that. And so all you can do is you can brighten the subject, but then when you brighten the subject, try and make them stand out, it, it can look a bit unnatural. But sometimes it's better to actually leave them the way they are uh, and then invert the selection and actually darken the background instead of brightening them uh, can can look more natural. You know, I me, mean, I'm all about the natural look. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. And and you know, as I was making the adjustment, I saw where it got to the point where it looked totally fake, and then yeah. I backed it down again mm -hmm. to make it you know keep keep it realistic. Um, but, but it was a dark, dull day. Like it was a cloudy, overcast day. And I mean, um, uh, like say an hour later. When I picked up my brother and we were trying to come home, it was just pouring rain. So that's the kind of day it was down there, and and that's why right. it was so you know dark looking um, in the uh, in the before picture. Yeah, but uh, fantastic. 
But yeah, there's some there's some really good tools in there. And now Dave, you used to use Polar quite a bit. Um, yeah. Are you still using it a lot, or have you gravitated since, towards? I went more towards Lightroom Mobile when Polar went to the subscription model, uh, right. just because they put too much behind the paywall. Mm, yeah. You know, but where, where before what they had behind the paywall was good, would be interesting, good to have, but they pulled enough behind it that it took the one or two reasons I use Polar, including like I could say, okay, select that and work on the light. You couldn't do like the color, but you could do light dark masking. So I can mask, you know, the sky or mask the foreground or mask a particular thing and deal with the brightness and the contrast. And then they said, oh, no, we're taking now that behind the the behind the pig. Not just oh, the okay. color and the advance. We're taking everything that's masking behind. Like, well, kind of like Lightroom. All, all of Lightroom's masking is behind the paywall. But it was, it did, they didn't go from no paywall to paywall. It's always been paywall, at least in my experience. Yeah. Yeah, so it yeah. doesn't. So, but when you, when you pull it away, it's like, well, that's the main reason I liked you, plus all the... Um, um, I like Polar's um, uh, the presets they offered, and they pulled more of those away. It's like you're you're good, but the reason I wanted to use you, <laughs> you pulled away from me, so I'll use something else. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I, I don't think I know some people. I don't know, but I, I know a lot of people don't like Adobe because they're the big bad Adobe. You know, they're they're the eight hundred pound gorilla in the uh, in the space because they're so. I don't have an anti Adobe thing, where some people are like, "Well, I want to use this alternative because it's not Adobe because I don't want to support Adobe type." Thing. Mm. So, and I mean, the, the one their program I use that's Adobe, it's it's not it's not even close as powerful, but is that Photoshop camera app they have, and that's the one I use sometimes for for creative editing and for like sky replacement. Yeah. And it does a darn good job of that too. Yeah. And, and I remember a video that, that um, David Addison did a little while ago where he talked about the advancement in their sky um, um, <laughs> masking and that sort of thing. And I wonder if the timings was that what you noticed, David, is that once they developed that, when they finished that project, did they then put it behind the firewall? And go, We've, this is so much better than it was. Now we need to. It would shock know. me, but yeah, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. I don't know offhand, but that that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hmm. Well, you know, these these developers, they 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 got to buy shoes, you know, and, and uh, oh, yeah. they got to pay their bills and stuff like that. It, it's just, we, I think we've been spoiled um, in early days of their apps by having, you know, access to so many tools and stuff. And then, you know, it comes to the point where they got, they think to themselves, okay. And, and I, I, I'm kind of take drawing this away from, um, uh, I was listening to, I think it was Mac power users and they were talking to Marco Armont, who's the developer of the Overcast app. And, you know, it, 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 they do things for free for for so long uh, or, you know, or, or maybe one time purchase that type of thing. But then it comes to the point where they have to switch to a subscription model because, you know, they got to buy a new computer every once in a while. They got, you know, like I say, they got to yeah. pay their bills. They got to buy their shoes, all this stuff. and. I don't blame them. I don't blame them for for taking that direction because I mean and yeah. there's there's a lot of people and you know and, and I would include myself in that that when when the subscription stuff started coming out strong, I was starting to get a little mm, upset about it. Yeah. But it you know that that's the guy on this shoulder is Tell it, whisper in my ear. You should be mad about this, but then the guy on this shoulder saying, "Well, no, but it's okay because they gotta, you know, they gotta make a living." So, yeah. I mean, well, I, I have a, I, I have, uh, I've purchased um, Halide even longer, and I don't, I, I rarely use the two of them to be honest. But when that is due to uh, renew, I will invest in them again because competition is great, and and I and I want to support them. 
Um, but I, I've, I've changed my business model for what I do. And for uh, the last few years, I've been selling courses, 99 US dollars for an individual course. And over the years, I've developed those into a transformation program, which is four courses. And those four courses, I sold those for 299. And it was feast or famine. It was, I'd go through a, a campaign where I would hit my email list every three months, just hit them up and go, do you want it? This is the benefits, the features, this is what it can mm-hmm. do for you. And I'd make some sales and then there'd be nothing. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And then and, and then you can go three months later, you do it again and then there'd be nothing. And, and I would, and marketing is an area that I am really bad. <laughs> I'm a content creator, I'm an educator. I, I love doing that. I don't like marketing and and i love building out my website the the content management system and the learning management system where all the courses are uh the club and 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 i've I've got to the point where it's like this is just burning me out i'm not producing the content that i love doing i'm spending so much time learning about facebook ads and and all that sort of thing it's not the part of the business that i wanted so i've changed everything and and put it all into the smartphone photography club now it is a subscription and i had an internal battle myself going mm-hmm. could i justify this myself um but but now for the nine dollars a month people get access to all my courses the 299 transformation program is in there before i used to sell that with 80 dollars a month repayments so you could actually all installment payments. So you could mm-hmm. access it for eighty dollars a month over so many months. Now you get it for nine dollars. <laughs> so yeah. in my mind, it's like, well, the value is is an immense value there. You're getting all of this for this small amount, but it's that that word subscription. So I've 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 temper I've put the marketing hat back on. <laughs> Okay. How am I going to how am I going to justify this to people who won't subscribe to an app for three dollars a month or whatever? And I'm I'm asking for nine dollars a month to join my club. So I need a unique selling proposition here. So then it's like, okay, well, why the other reason why I'm doing this is because people would buy a course and I and I did it just last year with that five day deal where they do the 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 bundle, the photography Mm -hmm. bundle, $99 you get a few thousand dollars worth of courses i've done one of those courses since then i've got some amazing content there but i just don't have the time to go and do yeah. video courses and sit there and watch videos as as motivated as i am i just can't prioritize that over other things and i thought my own customers are doing the same thing the completion rate is so low it's like five percent it's like i don't understand i've mm. I've I've got my qualification in instructional design. I've put all this effort into it, and you won't. You, you bought it, which is great, but now yeah, you won't yeah. do it. What's going on? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, well, at least with so the club, to- it, with, at least with the club, people can look at everything and take yep. out of it what they need to, and then exactly, you know. See, I, I would have they some make people reach out to but- me. Yeah, I would have some people reach out to me and say, look. I think I'm okay at photography, but should I? I'm not sure where where I am, what level I'm at with your training. Do I need to go into the more advanced stuff? Should I st- stick with the basics? Whereas now they have access to everything, they can go in there and go, okay, uh, oh, this is me. This is where I'm at, and then they can just join in where where they're at. They can pick and choose from any of the courses, but also the the photography forum is in there um, so that people can connect with other like minded people. I uh, there's only one Facebook group that I photography Facebook group that I'm involved in chains Mm -hmm. um bloody legends Facebook group I'm not interested in any other photography groups out there because I just find them really toxic and negative so that's that there was another part of the club was I had to have an area where people could share photos connect with other people and also uh I'm going to start doing the the monthly uh zoom calls so we jump on have a zoom Mm -hmm. call like this with all the members Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, photo critiques. That's what I'm really looking forward to because we all get benefit out of that, like you we were talking about. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So we can grab a member's photo and go, okay, it's your turn this month. Let's have a look. Let's do a breakdown. Let's talk about your intention, your composition, how you captured it, how you edited it, um, mm-hmm. and then just have the discussions. And I think 
that is the better way of learning nowadays. I think courses are dead. Online courses, I think they've had their time. COVID was the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Some people yeah. had the time to sit there and watch it. Now we, we just don't. And now that's, and it's, so I can't, I can't sell courses plus sell a forum plus sell uh, direct access to me with the Zoom calls. Like it's just, yeah, I don't yeah. want to be harassing people all the time. What about this offer? What about this offer? What about this? Whereas now yep. it's like, um, join the, the club for free. This is the, what you get access to. Or if you're a paid active member and not a subscriber mm-hmm. member, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, then you, you get all these benefits and the value. I tried to do the value proposition like that, that it's a lot more personalized. It's a lot more relevant. Um, yeah. Well, you know, people so, will, people will, uh, join photography clubs. You know, like I'm a member of our local camera club and I've been a member for, oh, I don't know, 18 years. And, you know, one of the things that we hear is that sometimes people aren't learning from it as much as they'd like to. Yeah. So uh, a club like yours is a great opportunity for basically anyone from anywhere in the world to... yeah learn all kinds of stuff like there's tons of stuff in there and and i mean if if this book is any indication folks i know you can't see me waving it in front of the camera but it's got <laughs> like 200 and some pages i think um if that's any indication of what you can pick up from from mike on these courses uh, or from this club uh, i mean you can you can. There's tons. There's tons to learn. That's all I could say. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be a salesman or anything because I'm one of the worst there is, but um, I'm just speaking from experience. There is all kinds of stuff there, and uh, it's um, it, it's worth a look. That's for damn sure. And and we're gonna put uh, are, are links ready for that, Mike? Yes, definitely. Yep. Yep. Okay, we'll we'll put some links in the show notes for people to check out. You know, the, the forum and the club and all that stuff and. And so um, the easiest URL, I've, I've purchased a domain to make it nice and easy. It's just smartphonephotography.club. And that oh, can, nice. that's actually straight there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Well, well, we'll put that in the show notes for easy, easy access for people. And um, uh, I think on, on that note, guys, I think we'll, we'll call it an evening. Um, you know, it's been it's been great catching up with you, Mike. And, uh, um, you know, can't wait to do this again. And um I'll, I'll definitely be looking forward to one of them zoom calls one of these days. And, uh, cause I think, I think this is, this is an amazing, um, way to, uh, catch up to people, talk about stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, like Dave and I, when we do our recent photos, it's, it's probably one of my favorite parts of the show because we get to learn from each other and what, how we yeah. take our pictures and, and edit them and all that stuff. So, um, it, for me, it's always about, always been about learning, and um, you know, I've always had this slogan, I guess you could say, um, and I don't know if, like, I don't even remember if I thought of it or if I heard it somewhere or what, but it's basically learn what you know and teach what you, or learn what you don't know, and or how does it go? Teach what you know and learn what you don't. That's it. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Um, yep. So I and and I think that's one of the best parts of. The, the the craft of photography is that people are always learning. Nobody knows everything about it. Um, There's you know, no so finish line. That's right. There is no finish line, no matter how good you are. <clears throat> and, and no matter how many years you've been doing it, there's no finish line. So, um, all right. Well, uh, let's let's wrap it up. Uh, t- tell everybody where they can find you. Uh, yeah, so all the content... Um... Well, smartphonephotography.club is where you can learn about the the club and what's what all the benefits and inclusions there and the value. Uh, but all my uh, access to my YouTube podcasts, uh, blogs, tutorials, all that is on smartphonephotographytraining.com. Yeah. All right. And we'll link to that in the show notes too. So, uh, Dave, how about yourself? You, you can find me pretty much everywhere on social media as ProfPod. Uh, I'm on um, TikTok as ProfPodPGH and on the Facebook group as Dave Podner Jr. Alrighty. And you can find me on, uh, well, all my stuff is at this one link called about.me slash McMillan. And uh, I think just about everywhere I'm online is should be on that page, that landing page. So 
Um, all right. Well, thanks again, Mike. Really appreciate you uh, taking some time. And I know this is a, a day off for you. So um, I think right. if 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 I remember correctly, for you, it is um, but midday. Yep. Smart. And uh, <laughs> Dave was doing some hand signs. <laughs> <laughs> you were doing display. the abacus. Yeah, you say you were you it was you doing the abacus in your head. Okay, carry oh, the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Move yeah, this was, this was, way. Was, <laughs> okay. Well, see, okay, so there's 16 hours difference between us and Mike. And Mike is 16 hours ahead of us. So mm -hmm. that would put you at eleven thirty, almost eleven thirty in the morning, right? Spot on. Yeah, okay. Because yep. um I mean I've I've got uh, on my lock screen on my phone, I got Shane's time zone, which I think you're in the same time zone anyway. So yep, yep. <laughs> that's how I know whether he's awake or sleeping or what's going on. <laughs> but um but yeah, no, no, it was fun. And um so uh thanks again for coming on and uh I guess we'll see everybody on the next one. Right. Cheers. Have a great one, everyone.